Hey guys, welcome. Today we are looking at how to fix a dryer. Um, if your dryer sounds like this, or if you have one that sounds like this, then we're gonna take a look and see if we can make it sound like this. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn off the gas and unplug the dryer. Uh, if it's wired directly to the wall, you're gonna wanna find the breaker and flip it off, or, you know, switch it off. Uh, you're going to want to disconnect the gas line if it is a gas one. If not, uh, you have an easier job. And uh, it should be uh, fairly simple. Um, just unscrew it and then disconnect the vent line, the dryer vent line. You need to check and make sure that there's no lint built up in there. If there is, it can cause a fire. Um, also, the next step is to remove the door so you can un screw the screws that hold the door in place and then lift up gently on the door and tug. You'll see those hinges have um, grooves to, to hold it in place to help you in assembly and disassembly. Next is remove the bumper and the other screw that holds the front panel on and you can lift the front panel free and set that off to the side. Uh, the next is the screws that hold the lid closed. So there's one on each side. You can unscrew both of those and then you can lift the lid up and with the lid up, the top of the drum is exposed. You can see the belt across the back of the drum there. Uh, the next step is to remove the front of the dryer. There's three screws on each side. There's one right above that one I'm unscrewing there that I forgot to film. Uh, but yeah, there's three on each side, at least on this particular dryer. So pull them all loose, and with those loose, you can lift the front free. Once that's out, you can rotate it around the side and just set it set it up against the dryer uh, to get out of the way for now. Uh, the next step is to remove the drum. So you got to get the belt loose and the belt is just below the fan there um, or just behind the fan. So if you look through there you can see the tensioner and if you pull the belt around the edge of the tensioner pulley then it should pop free and you can get the belt off of the motor pulley as well and then the whole drum will lift out um, and they generally slide right out the front so uh, you can set that off to the side as well and you can see the two drum idler pulleys on the back there so give those a spin make sure those are still good uh, it could be a good idea to replace those as well but on this particular case you can see the idler pulley is bad it doesn't spin freely and it squeaks so uh, that's the pulley we're going to be focusing on so got to pull the spring loose and there's a bolt that holds this tensioner assembly in place. Um, yours may be a different size, but just grab the appropriate socket and it unscrews easily. And with that screw unscrewed, you can just lift the tensioner assembly out. Now, um, this one has grease on it. Uh, so what we're doing here is pulling the C-clip out and there's a washer and this is the old tensioner pulley and it has a bushing in there we're replacing it with a uh, pulley that has bearings on it. You'll notice that the shaft is significantly bigger. So what I'm going to do in this in this uh, uh, video is to dr grind the back of that off, uh, punch the the shaft out, the one that's currently in there, and weld this larger bolt in place. Um, that's the right diameter for the pulley that I got that has the bearings. So. Um, yeah, just grinding off the the um, the back there that is punched out to hold the the pin in place. I initially thought that just banging it would knock it loose, but that's not the case. So we're taking it into the shop here and going to punch it out with a punch, uh, a couple of good whacks, and it's free. And you'll see that the hole, I believe it's a three eighths size hole, um, and that's not nearly big enough for our bolt. So. We're going to drill that out. It's a half inch bolt. And with that all drilled out, we now have room to put the larger bolt shaft in place. So we'll go back over to the vise and uh, test fit. The bolt goes in fine. Um, we'll go ahead and use a washer for a spacer there so the pulley doesn't rub on the bracket and then put the pulley in place, the proper orientation. Now, if you go ahead and do this, then make sure that you put the bolt through the hole the right way before you weld it on. Otherwise, uh, it'll be useless. Uh, with that, 
set up. I'm marking a hole here. I'm going to drill through there to put a cotter pin in place. Um, since I don't have a lathe, I can't, I can't uh, machine a groove into this bolt and reuse the old C-clip. So we're making use of a cotter pin here. Um, yeah, the size here. So I'm going to pick the right size drill bit. Uh, you can use whichever cotter pin and drill bit size is correct for your application. Um, and then put the new drill in the, in the drill press and just drill through the center of the bolt. I didn't quite get the camera lined up correctly here, uh, but it is centered perfectly. So we're good here. Um, putting it back in the vise. Now the shaft for the new pulley. Uh, we'll fit in there and our test fit. This is the way it'll go together. We have the, the washer on the back side as well. Uh, and then test fit the cotter pin to make sure that the clearances are correct. You don't want the hole for the cotter pin too close. Otherwise the pulley won't spin freely and you'll end up with other problems. So now I'm just welding the uh, bolt to the bracket and uh, with it all welded in place, I dunked it in some water to quench it and cool it off. That way I can actually touch it with my bare hands um, and cut off the excess bolt and clean up the, the edges of the bolt here. And we're good to reassemble the tensioner at this point. So I took it back outside to the dryer, put an inner washer, put the pulley on, and the outer washer. You'll notice that that pulley has, has the roller bearings in it, so it should last a lot longer than the old pulley, although the old pulley lasted for a good 15 years or so. Um, so yeah, I'm just bending the welding it, made it so that uh, the uh, bolt sat a little bit farther away so the clearance wasn't quite as good. So um, had to bend the cotter pin to get it to fit. And with the cotter pin in place, just bend the ears to keep the washer in place and the washer will keep the um will keep the new tensioner pulley on so i just give that a test spin make sure it functions the way it should and we're golden so now what we got to do is grease up the contact point where it was greased before uh, this is the bushing that fits through the mount hole that the screw went through um, so I'm just using regular disc brake grease here. This is just from a local auto parts store. Just apply a little bit on the surface where it rubs on the metal um, once it's mounted up inside the, the, the dryer. Um, and then put the bushing back in place there. Um, clean the excess grease off. And then it can just mount directly back into the hole. It's really simple. It just screws in. Uh, you don't want to over torque it. It's a small screw and you can strip it or break it if you use too much force. So just snug. Um, yeah, if the it could be a good idea on your dryer depending on how well worn the, the drum rollers are. Those are the two rollers that were directly above this um, that I spun when I was checking to see which one that's bad, but maybe a good idea to replace those as well. Um, yeah, put the spring back on, and now the the belt, uh, the grooves face the the grooves in the belt face the drum, um, and then the the drum just slides back in the same way it came out, and you set the edge of the drum on the the drum rollers there at the bottom, and then make sure that the felt is um, forms a seal around the edge of the drum. Um, that way it keeps the, the hot air in the dryer like it should be. So at this point, you want to make sure that your pulley is wrapped around the motor. I mean, your belt is wrapped around the motor pulley and then around the tensioner appropriately. So here's a close up. It should go around the motor pulley and then the tensioner should be able to apply tension to the belt to keep it tight around the, the motor pulley and around the drum. Um, so you have to reach in on the left side to get it around the pulley, the motor pulley, and then you have to reach around the right side of the blower there to get it around the tensioner. Um, I just reached with my right hand and pushed the tensioner up, and then with that pushed up, you can um, 
slide a slide the belt around the tensioner easily. So then it's the, the rest is fairly easy. It's just reverse um, the reverse of the of taking it apart. The front panel goes back on. So just make sure that everything's lined up correctly. Uh, make sure that the blower motor, I mean the the blower fan, is aimed at the the ductwork that drops down there. Um, you can close the lid and um, put the the lid clamps back in place. You'll notice that um, I initially, if you were watching closely, you notice that I put the screws in first and forgot that I had to put those clamps in and I had to take them back out again. So now the the front panel just drops in the in the slats and uh, snaps back in place. You want to put the screws back in on the side that the door is not mounted on, um, and that's the, the bump stop on that side. You can switch the hinges around if you want your dryer to open on the opposite direction from the way it, it currently is. And in this case, the hinges just slide back in those grooves there. Once they're in, the, the door drops down about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and then you can you can leave the door while you're picking up your screws. Uh, and then the screws just screw in. Um, hold the door in place. So we get the bottom and then get the top. And if you took your lint filter out, don't forget to put it back in. And yeah, it's good to go. So yeah, hooking it back up. Um, make sure your uh, vent is hooked up correctly and not kinked. If you have it kinked, it can be a fire hazard. If there is lint built up in there, it can be a fire hazard. So it could be a good idea to replace it or clean it uh, good. Make sure your gas line is hooked back up if you have a gas dryer. Um, if you don't, then yeah, just plug in your your electrical or make sure that your circuit breaker is turned back on uh, if you turned it off. Um, once your gas line is hooked back up again, you'll want to get a bottle of soapy water and oh turn the gas on yeah don't forget that um, and then get your bottle of soapy water and spray the connection um, look for any bubbles uh, do it liberally because you really don't want a gas leak um, if you're at all uncertain just hire a professional to do it um, with that done yeah toss some clothes in there uh, plug it in push it back in place pick your settings and uh, Go ahead and start it and enjoy the quiet. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you uh, want to see more tutorials on how to fix stuff, how to build stuff, how to work with electronics and mechanical stuff. Um, that's what we do on this channel. So thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.